to start with, we'll format the cells. First thing we want to do is allow this text to wrap so we can fit long titles on the top of the bar. So clicking on allowing text to wrap. And we'll drop that down a little bit just so there's enough room for everything. And call it bold to give them all a bold title so it looks pretty. Next thing that we want to do is select all of our data. Oh, I hate that. Select all of our data. Right click and you'll see row height. Click on row height and we want to make this 30. It just spaces things out so that we can um, see everything nicely. Our next quick trick, select column D and you want to align that to the top so we click on the button that aligns to the top. You guys will see why that's important in a minute. And one more trick for us. We want to insert a column here. So right click there, insert, uh, gives us a new column. Because it can be hard to use March, June, September, December, etc. to figure out which value you're actually talking about. So if we just start labeling the first few cells, like so, we get a pattern, select them all, and if you get that little box, see how it becomes a little cross in the corner, and start dragging down, it's going to label all these one to whatever. And it will let us know, one, how many data points we have. Oops, I missed some. Um, and uh, give us an actual value that we can use to reference, for instance, September 1991 would be value 3. Let's go ahead and make these a height of 30 as well. So again, select, right click, row height, and 30 with OK. Yep. Alright, so let's move on to smoothing our data. The first column that we're going to create is the moving mean. And this, again, is going to be the average or the mean of a full set of the period that we have. So if we look at our data, March, June, September, December, March, it's going in a period of four. So we need to find the average of the first four data points. And in terms of making it easy to read, we can click in this column, and you'll see why here. But we hit the equal sign, and we want to start typing average you see that it comes up, which gives you tips on how to put in the formula. So this will say returns the average, blah blah blah. But you want to make sure you put in a bracket, and this is what we need. We need the values that we're actually going to average. Now the nice thing about Excel is that we can just use our mouse to click and draw down to the first four data sets that we need. And if you press enter, well, close bracket, press enter, that's the average of those four points. And if you want to double check, double click again, you'll see it highlighted. That's the average of the four points that we've taken. Now, at any point you have your formula selected like this, highlighted, and you click on something else. Oop. Another, oh, it's not showing it. Never mind. Um, so at this point, go ahead and press enter. Those are the four points as an average. And the nice thing about Excel, again, is that if we click and drag, it's going to repeat that pattern. So if we drag it down a few, let's just see what happens. Double click. It's now taking the average of those four points. Taking an average of the next four points. So you can see that the pattern's continuing. So what we need to do is actually drag that formula all the way down to the bottom of our data. It can be tricky if you don't have a mouse. Highly recommend using one let go, and that formula has been applied to all of our data points. But if you might remember from doing this by hand, it gets a bit tricky. What happens if I double click on this one? It's done an average, but only of three values. So is that a valid average for us? You should be saying no. So you want to just check after you've selected, dragged that formula down for all of your data points, that the last one you have is actually for a valid set of averages. So in this case, this one is average, this one's correct here, so we will delete this one. Just click on it and hit your delete button. Again, because it's not a valid average, it was only averaging three points. Now the reason we've made that align to the top is because you can now see that these four points here oops, are lined up with the average of this one. 
of 11.42, and so it just gives you a little bit of a visual to put it sort of in the middle of those four. But the next thing you might remember is that if you're doing an average, a moving mean with an even period, like four or six, you need to do a center moving mean as well. Which means we have to take the average of two of these in a row. So again, hit equals, start typing the word average with an open bracket, and select the two points we want averaged, and you can just press enter. Again, this is the average of these two points. So, same pattern, get the little square in the bottom corner, sorry, the little black cross in the bottom corner, this one, and drag it down. And let's double check. Oh, that one's trying to take an average of an empty cell, so it is rubbish. We are going to delete it. And double check. We've got full cells for all those formula, so we are good to go. So this is the centered moving mean, and this is the line that we will actually plot on our graph um, to show us basically what this data looks like in time without the seasonal averages bouncing us all over the place. But before we do that, let's go ahead and keep moving. So our next thing is the individual seasonal effect. So the individual season effect is looking at each particular year and month, so for instance March 1991, and comparing it to the centered moving mean to see what the effect from was the season. Because the centered moving mean gives us a representation, again, kind of without the season, what is going on without the periodic up and downs from highs and lows. So we have to start where we actually have a centered moving mean. It wouldn't make sense to use June 1991, because we don't have a centered moving mean. So we'll start with September 1991, because we do have a centered moving mean. So our formula for this is, the say, yeah, click on it and press equals so you get a formula. Click on the actual value, and then subtract, and click on the centered moving mean, and hit enter. So here we see this is our individual season effect. And what this 30, negative 34 means is that the supermarket sales in September were 1,114, but the centered moving mean, kind of the adjusted data of the average around that time, is slightly higher than that. In fact, it's 34 higher than that. So the negative 34 means we're 34 below the centered moving mean. And same pattern with Excel. We'll select the little cross in the corner and drag this down. and double check your last formula. Does that make sense? Yep, we've got full cells for that whole formula, so we're good to go. Coming back up, we've got one more key piece of information to do for Achieved here, and that is calculating our average seasonal effect. So in this case, we need to take the average for each of the particular months, and so this involves some complex clicking, basically. We are again going to be doing an average, so we start typing average with an open bracket, but we only want to take an average of the September values. So I'm going to hold down the control key the whole time, so it's very important, hold the control button and start clicking on the ones that are only for September. So September, 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 you'll notice it's every four. Um, scrolling down with your mouse, September. September, 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 September. September, September, and September. Make sure we've got them all. We should see one every fourth. Oh, there's one we missed. September. Okay, so this is going to take the average of every fourth value, all of the September values. So once you have them all selected, you can press enter, and we get our value. So the average seasonal effect in September is negative 30, so $30, $30 million below the centered moving mean. 
Now, to get the average seasonal effect for December, March, and June, we can do a trick here. Say this clicking on everything. If we drag down using the little black X in the corner, it's going to try and repeat that pattern, but it's going to shift each one down slightly. So if we double click here, what averages we found? December, 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 etc. So let's go all the way down. It's trying to average one empty cell. So we can try to get rid of that. It's the very last cell here, um, 49, that we don't need. So again, double click all the way down. And 49, there's no value for December there, so we didn't want it. Good. And if we double check for the next one, again, trying to take an average of a value that's not there, and that's for 50, G50. So if we look at our formula, there's G50. You can delete it. It should be the last one if you did them all in order, but that 34 is the one I missed the first time. And press Enter when you're done, it will save the formula. And double click the last one, let's check here. Going all the way down, so we want to get rid of the 52. Oops, am I reading that wrong? 51. We want to get rid of the 51, so backspace until you get rid of it. And press Enter. Okay, so this is our average seasonal effect for September. For December. For March and for June. Okay, so at this point we've done a lot for our Excel sheet in terms of smoothing the data and calculating lots of values for